dear friends today we are going to learn about addition reactions elimination reactions molecular rearrangement reactions and pericyclic reactions after listening to this video you are a, you will be able to differentiate between the addition reactions elimination reactions molecular rearrangement reactions and pericyclic reactions previously we have learnt about substitution reactions and the types of reactions we have learnt about substitution reactions where substitution reactions are of three types free radical substitution electrophilic substitution and nucleophilic substitution reactions similarly based on the reagent what we use in reactions addition reactions addition reactions are of three types based on the reagent what we use in reactions is addition reaction is of three types that is if we use a free radical as a reagent then the reaction is a free radical addition reaction if the reagent is electrophile then the reaction is electrophilic addition reaction if the reagent is nucleophile then the reaction is nucleophilic addition reaction let us see one by one first one is free radical addition reaction so free radical addition reaction name itself says that the reagent used in these reactions is a free radical in previous videos or previous like lessons we have learned that the free radicals are formed or obtained by the homolytic bond fission of a molecule gives rise to free radical so in mechanistically a free radical addition reaction of alkenes is of three stages first stage of free radical addition reaction is initiation so these reactions especially undergoes in presence of light h nu in presence of light where light initi initiates the initiates the formation of free radical in presence of light chlorine molecule undergoes homolytic fission to give a free radical of chlorine obtained free radical reacts with the ethylene molecule which is present in inside the reaction mixture or the obtained chloride free radical chlorine free radical reacts with ethylene molecule to propagate a chain reaction gives rise to chloro 1 chloro ethyl free radical and this 1 chloro ethyl free radical which again propagates or reacts with the chlorine molecule which is present inside the reaction mixture gives rise to dichloro 1 to dichloroethane what we expect is the product 1 to dichloroethane is a obtained during the propagation step at the same time there is a chloride free radical also obtained this chloride reaction again it's a chain reaction this goes here and reacts with ethylene molecule to give this and the again chloride free radical is formed the formed chloride free chloride free radical again reacts with ethylene since it is a chain reaction this goes on till the whole substrate is completed at the end of the reaction there is a termination step where where f the free radicals of chlorine and chlorine may react with each other to give a to give chlorine back back to the chlorine or one chloroethyl free radical may react with actual reaction is may react with chlorine free radical to give one to dichloroethane what is our product which is obtained major second one the other chance of reaction is one chloroethyl free radical may react or may form a bond with its own or other one chloroethyl free radical to give one four one two three four one four dichlorobutane molecule dear friends free radical addition reaction is a reaction where a free radical is added to a double bond a free radical is added to a double bond how many free radicals are added two free radicals 
clear so addition reaction always adds to groups so free radical reaction adds to groups of free radicals two groups or atoms of free radicals be clear so no confusion always addition reaction means two atoms are added to the reactant free radical addition reaction is a reaction two free radicals are added for example two free radicals of chlorines are added to ethylene molecule clear clear second type is electrophilic addition reaction electrophilic addition reaction the name itself says that electrophile is added to alkenes for example alkenes since alkenes are electron rich compounds or they are they may act as a nucleophile which are easily donates a lone pair or a bonded pair of electrons to make a bond these alkenes always undergoes alkenes always undergoes electrophilic substitute uh, electrophilic addition reactions alkenes always undergoes electrophilic addition reactions that means electrophile is added first electrophile is added first for example hbr hbr is a acid where by heterolytic fission of this hbr bond gives rise to h plus and br minus and in these two uh, in these two ions h plus is a electrophile br minus is a nucleophile so th that is how ethylene in presence of hbr gives ethyl bromide let us see mechanistically electrophilic addition how it goes so the ethylene molecule makes a bond or gives a donates this bonded pair of electrons to make a bond of this ch bond that means electrophile of h plus is added first which is added electrophile is added electrophile is added to ethylene molecule that is why electrophilic addition reaction and the intermediate what we get in these reactions is a carbocation so just now we learnt that carbocation is more stable than carbanion c plus is more stable than c minus and just now we also learnt that carbocation carbocation that is is more stable than carbanion the obtained carbocation is will react with a nucleophile of bromine to give ethyl bromide dear friend just now i cleared that in addition reactions two free radicals are added in free radical addition reaction or in addition reactions of electrophilic addition reaction two ions but the sequence of addition is important in electrophilic addition reactions electrophile is added first in electrophilic addition reactions electrophile is added first electrophile is added first that is why this is known as electrophilic addition reactions but overall two ions are added to double bond that is alkene or two ions are added to the reactant in all addition reactions either two free radicals or two ions are added if the added ion is electrophile then the reaction is known as electrophilic addition reactions alkenes always undergoes electrophilic addition reactions so what happens if it undergoes nucleophilic addition reactions if alkene undergoes nucleophilic addition reaction that means bromine if attacks first nucleophile is added first to alkene what happens the intermediate what we get is carbonyl carbanion c minus is obtained so we know that c minus is less stable or not favorable when compared to c plus so that is why this intermediate is not formed if it is stable then there is a chance to make a bond with h plus to give the same product but this type of carbanion is less stable when compared to carbocation so you may wonder that c minus why it is not stable but it is clear that c plus is more stable than c minus for for example o minus n minus f minus are stable but not c minus c minus is not stable c plus is stable just remember why c plus is more stable than c minus any idea yes so compared to oxygen 
and nitrogen and fluorine carbon is less electronegative that is why as c plus is a more stable than c minus good so under addition reactions free radical addition reactions are completed then electrophilic addition reactions are completed and the third type of addition reaction is nucleophilic addition reaction what is a nucleophilic addition reaction yes the name itself says that nucleophilic addition reaction is a reaction where nucleophile is added first what is nucleophilic addition reaction a nucleophilic addition reaction is a reaction where nucleophile is added first then followed by electrophile then followed by electrophile very good so let us see mechanism before going to mechanism where we find these reactions especially carbonyl compounds carbonyl compounds undergoes nucleophilic addition reactions carbonyl compounds undergoes nucleophilic addition reaction carbonyl compounds undergoes nucleophilic addition reactions alkenes undergoes electrophilic addition reactions carbonyl compounds undergoes nucleophilic addition reactions let us see mechanistically how it is going or how it takes place ah, before going to the carbonyl compounds what are the carbonyl compounds for example aldehydes ketones esters acids what not so c double bond o compounds are carbonyl compounds broadly we can say carbonyl compounds are the compounds which have c double bond o along with carbon attached to other groups are the compounds are known as carbonyl compounds for example aldehyde and ketone let us uh, stick, uh, stick to our aldehyde for example aldehyde first adds to nucleophile so just now we saw that o minus is more stable than c plus c plus if a nucleophile is added first to carbon then the intermediate what we get is o minus this is more stable if for example electrophile is added first to oxygen then the intermediate what we get is c plus it is less stable when compared to our o minus because this o minus is more stable because oxygen is more electronegative and it able to accommodate o minus very easily and the uh, o minus is very stable or more stable that is why this is favorable route where nucleophile is added first to give this intermediate then later this intermediate reacts with electrophile to give the final product so overall what is happening in these nucleophilic addition reactions is two ions are added it is clear so in addition reactions two groups or atoms are added to the reactant in free radical reactions two free radicals are added in electrophilic addition reactions two ions are added but the first added group is electrophile good then it later adds to nucleophile in nucleophilic addition reactions mechanistically nucleophile is added first for example carbonyl compounds undergo these type of reactions nucleophile is added first to the carbonyl compa compounds to give a nucleophilic substituted or uh, nucleophilic added intermediate that is o minus which is more stable and later it reacts with electrophile to give the product for example a grignard reaction is a example where nucleophilic addition takes place there are n number of reactions carbonyl compounds undergoes nucleophilic addition reactions but for the simplicity i have taken grignard reaction is an example where for example if i take ketone is a carbonyl compound grignard reagent what is the grignard reagent a grignard reagent is a reagent alkyl magnesium halides are known as grignard reagents grignard reagent uh, is a mixture of or it consists of alkyl nucleophile or minus it's a nucleophile this nucleophile is added first to the carbonyl compound to give more stable o minus and magnesium bromide intermediate this is a intermediate which is more stable and later it reacts with h plus ions of uh, acidic hydrolysis to give alcohols so grignard reaction is a reaction where nucleophilic addition reaction takes place grignard reaction is an example where nucleophilic addition reaction takes place 
nucleophile is added first what is added first nucleophile is added first not but not electrophile nucleophilic addition takes place in grignard reactions nucleophilic addition takes place in grignard reaction and one more point carbonyl compounds always undergoes nucleophilic addition reactions carbonyl compounds always undergoes nucleophilic addition reactions dear friends addition reactions are of three types first one is free radical addition reaction and second one is electrophilic addition reactions and third one is nucleophilic addition reactions two important points to remember are alkenes always undergoes electrophilic addition reactions clear carbonyl compounds always undergoes carbonyl compounds always undergoes nucleophilic addition reactions this is how type under types of reactions now we have completed first one is new substitution reactions then the second one is second one is addition reactions and the third topic what we are going to start is is elimination reactions elimination reactions elimination reaction by the name a group are groups are eliminated from the molecule eliminated or removed elimination reaction is a reaction where atoms or groups are removed from the reaction reaction mixture or reactant then these reactions are known as elimination reactions so based on the elimination type of elimination what we are going to perform it is of two types it is of two types alpha elimination and beta elimination alpha elimination name itself shows that uh, removing groups or atoms are removed from the same carbon same carbon if the two groups here also be clear as in the case of addition reactions where two ions are added or two free radicals are added to the substrate at this in a similar manner in elimination reaction two atoms are two groups are removed how many two atoms or two groups are removed from the substrate or reactant if the two groups are removed from the same carbon or same atom then the elimination reaction is known as alpha elimination the elimination reaction is known as alpha elimination so alpha elimination is observed very 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 rare case there are very few examples so better not to insist much effort or show much interest on these eliminations we will move on to beta elimination reactions for example under elimination alpha elimination reactions if i take chloroform and react with sodium hydroxide we will get carbene dichloro dichlorocarbene yes so how it is formed this chloroform loses h plus ions in presence of oh to give trichlorocarbanion this carbanion just now we learnt it is not stable so it again loses chloride ion to give dichlorocarbene so what i said elimination reactions of alpha elimination reactions are very very less important so this is broad aspect of alpha elimination then the second example or the second type of elimination reaction is beta elimination beta elimination reaction is a reaction where the removing groups are the eliminated groups are eliminated are removed from the adjacent carbons or beta carbon alpha and beta carbon if the first group is removed from the alpha carbon and the second group is removed from the beta carbon that is why a beta elimination reaction beta elimination reaction is a reaction where the removing groups are removed from the two adjacent carbons two adjacent carbons be clear but not away from are very far from the two groups so adjacent groups are removed that is beta elimination let us see what is happening so as the name itself shows that beta elimination there is a chance of unimolecular elimination reaction means where the elimination rate of the reaction depends on only one molecule that is on reactant bimolecular elimination reaction by molecular elimination reaction is a reaction where the rate of the reaction depends on both the reactant and reagent 
elimination unimolecular via conjugate base E1CB. It is a different type of reaction. We will learn what is the E1CB. So, dear friends, be clear that what is E1. So, in previous lesson or pre previous video or previous lecture, we have learned E that is substitution reactions. Under substitution reactions, we have used electrophilic substitution reactions ASE1, ASE2, right? ASE aromatic. So, in detail, we have learned SE aromatic reactions. So, these are the reactions where there is no S. There is no S is seen in these elimination reactions. So, be clear E1 means elimination, removal reaction. E2 means it's an elimination reaction. E1CB is a reaction of elimination. So, first example under these reactions is unimolecular elimination reactions. What are unimolecular elimination reactions? Elimination reaction where the removal step is depends on only the first step or the slowest step of the reaction. For example, tertiary alkyl halides when treated with alcoholic AOH will get alkanes. Dear friends, it is one of the methods followed to make alkanes is elimination reactions so alkyl halides are treated with alcoholic OH to give alkenes how do we get alkenes alkenes are obtained by the treatment of tert uh, tertiary alkyl halides or alkyl halides by the treatment of alcoholic OH will get alkenes so what is happening mechanistically in even reactions tertiary alkyl halide undergoes or loses chloride ion slowly so what is obtained carbocation intermediate the same carbocation intermediate or the similar type of carbocation intermediates are observed or found in sn1 type reaction nucleophilic substitution reactions that is unimolecular nucleophilic substitution reactions so where this carbocation intermediate when it is treated with alcoholic koh alcoholic koh it undergoes elimination reaction to give alkene Dear friends, if I take aqueous KOH at this stage, if I take aqueous KOH, what happens? We will get we will get nucleophilic substituted product. What we will get? Nucleophilic substitution product that is SN1 product. That is how unimolecular elimination reaction is a reaction where the elimination step depends on the first step that is rate determining step. So these reactions are observed in tertiary alkyl halides but not in primary alkyl halides second one is bimolecular elimination reactions bimolecular elimination reactions are the reactions where the elimination step depends on both the reactant and reagent for example primary alkyl halides in presence of alcoholic koh undergoes these type of reactions to give bimolecular elimination reaction to give alkenes so just now what i said is alkenes are prepared from alkyl halides in presence of alcoholic koh is the one of the methods to make alkenes mechanistically this e2 mechanism follows transition state that is it's a single step reaction where the rate of the reaction depends on reactant that is alkyl halide and the reagent of alcoholic KOH and it's a concerted reaction because it undergoes in one step these reactions are known as concerted reactions and the product obtained is alkene the rate of the reaction depends on both alkyl halide and hydroxide ion that is why these reactions are known as bimolecular and since these are concerted and E2 reactions are concerted what is the difference between E1 and E2 yes in detail we have learnt about the differences between sn1 and sn2 similar to that reaction e1 and e2 are the same for example e1 reactions are observed in e1 reactions are observed in tertiary alkyl halides e2 are observed in primary alkyl halides and e1 is more than one step this is one step carbocation is observed no carbocation transition state is observed rearrangement ta rearrangement may takes place under these reactions e2 reactions there is no chance of rearrangement this is how elimination reaction is of two types one is 
uh, of three types one is e1 and e2 dear friends most of the times a student or an organic chemist doubt that what happens if alkyl halide is treated with aqueous KOH and alkali KOH so aqueous KOH as we know hydroxide ion is 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 bounded or are shielded with water molecules in aqueous KOH this OH is not free because this OH is surrounded by number of water molecules that is why aqueous KOH undergoes this OH is very 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 nucleophilic this easily this easily substitute undergoes undergoes substitution reaction whereas alkalic KOH alkalic KOH is a OH is very 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 easily available it is not surrounded by any protic solvent that is water where OH alcohol alcohol molecules are very few surrounded by this OH and this OH easily take take out the hydrogen and it eliminates the hydrogen that means all aqueous KOH favors or aqueous KOH gives rise to SN1 reaction or nucleophilic substitution reactions whereas alcoholic KOH gives rise to elimination reaction so clear elimination reaction elimination unimolecular via conjugate base these are very 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 important but no need to pay much much time or much uh, attention on these reactions because these reactions are found very few in organic chemistry so for example elimination unimolecular so the elimination step is the first step where where hydrogen is removed first for example the conjugate base this is a conjugate base o c minus is observed it's a conjugate base it's a transition state then it's a slow step where fluoride ion is removed to give this dichloro difluoro ethylene so this is how elimination unimolecular via conjugate base reaction undergoes dear friends no need to show much attention on these reactions till now we have learned three types of reactions first one is substitution reaction second one is addition reaction third one is elimination reaction so the fourth type reaction is molecular rearrangement reactions dear friends we have shown that molecular rearrangement reactions the name itself shows that it's a rearrangement reaction where rearrangement takes place so it is of two types intramolecular rearrangement reaction and intermolecular rearrangement reactions if the rearrangement takes place within the molecule then the reaction is known as intramolecular if the rearrangement takes place intermolecular then the rearrangement is known as intermolecular and the rearrangement mainly takes place one two that is adjacent rearrangement takes place but not far from adjacent 1 3 is not observed whether it is 1 2 2 3 or 3 4 are observed for example one bromopropane in presence of aluminum tribromide gives two bromopropane mechanistically this one bromopropane loses bromide ion to give this carbocation primary carbocation which is unstable or less stable it rearranges or rearranges to secondary carbocation by the rearrangement of hydrogen to give secondary carbocation which is more stable this carbocation again reacts with the bromide ion to give two bromopropane this is how intramolecular rearrangement reactions takes place dear friends just now we said thus carbocations are stable the order of carbocations is like this tertiary is more stable than secondary secondary is more stable than primary so till now we have learned substitution addition elimination and molecular rearrangement and the fifth type is pericyclic reactions pericyclic reactions is a separate topic or there are n number of pericyclic reactions are there but the reaction mechanism are learning to how to write reaction mechanism it is restricted to one page or it is restricted to basics of pericyclic reactions where we are learning only 
the basics of pericyclic reactions in future we will learn in detail about pericyclic reactions but at this moment pericyclic reactions are the reactions which are neither radical nor ionic these are concerted moreover reversible reactions these reactions proceed via cyclic transition state especially these pericyclic reactions undergoes under thermal that is heating or photochemical conditions so these are the reactions where we will find pericyclic reactions undergoes under photochemical conditions they by the name it is of three types electrocyclic reactions cycloaddition reactions and sigmatropic reactions by the name itself says that electrocyclic reaction is a cyclic reaction for example 13 butadiene we will get cyclobutene clear and cycloaddition reaction for example diels solder reaction where in this 13 butadiene and ethylene we will give cyclohexene there is a very good example is the diels solder reaction and sigmatropic reaction sigmatropic reactions are very 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 important in organic chemistry we will learn in detail in future so pericyclic reactions are three types electrocyclic cycloaddition and sigmatropic reaction dear friends we have learned all five types of reactions first one is nucleophilic substitu uh, substitution reactions second one is addition reactions third one is elimination reaction fourth one is molecular rearrangement fifth one is pericyclic reactions thank you for your time and uh, please subscribe my videos and uh, wait for the next video i am going to post on electronic displacement of of covalent bond we will learn about displacement reactions thank you and please subscribe my channel chari organic chemistry thank you